I know this might be a topic of contention, but Final Fantasy XIV, as of right now, June 18th, 2021, is indisputably the best MMORPG currently available. And I'm aware that there are going to be multiple of you sitting there completely jaw agape in complete disbelief that I would say something like this. But this really shouldn't come as a surprise. I've stated this repeatedly over the course of the last few years, and after Shadowbringers release, and I've played through quite an extensive amount of it, it is more evident to me right now and to everyone in general how high quality a title this game is. But at the very same time, as no game is infallible, Final Fantasy XIV does have areas that need improvement, aspects of the game that are missing. And today I want to take a little bit of your time and discuss what makes Final Fantasy XIV the best MMORPG to me, not to you. You might have some deep seething, unadulterated, loathing hatred for this game, and that is your right. But this is a game that has taken thousands of hours from me, and I don't regret any of it. Now, before we go any further, if you want to stay up to date with everything concerning Final Fantasy XIV or MMO news in general, scroll down, click that subscribe button, and become part of our community. Now, Final Fantasy XIV is a pay to play MMORPG, and this is something that prevents a lot of you guys from trying it out, but hear me out for a second here. Were you aware that they actually offer an expanded free trial that allows you to play through the entirety of the base game and the award-winning Heavensward expansion all the way up to level 60 completely free? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm sorry. I know I had to get that meme out of the way. Now, where do I even begin? So I'm quite the ardent JRPG fan. I've been playing JRPGs my entire life. I grew up on JRPGs like Breath of Fire 4, Dragon Quest 8, Suikoden 1 and 2, Final Fantasy 8 and 9, Star Ocean Till the End of Time, Tales of Symphonia and Fantasia, Xenosaga, The Legend of Dragoon, Golden Sun, you name a JRPG and I guarantee you I have played it. It is only natural then that I would find myself drawn to Final Fantasy 14. I've been playing since patch 2.3, patch 2.4, a patch or two before Heavensward came out, I've had an active subscription for the last five years of my life, and I have played during the first and last three months of every expansion. Like a lot of players, when I first began playing, I was confused by the combat naturally. I'd come from a game like World of Warcraft. Yeah, I am a WoW refugee. I've been playing WoW since Wrath of the Lich King all the way back in 2008, and much like Final Fantasy XIV, I have had an active subscription there for probably way too long. WoW's tab target combat is one of the best in the genre. Like or hate the game, you cannot deny that not only are the animations for characters and abilities top tier, but everything just feels so smooth, it feels so fluid, and the global cooldowns on abilities feel like they're available much more frequently than in Final Fantasy XIV. And early on, you really do feel the impact on the longer global cooldowns. It isn't until you get access to quite a few of your abilities, some of which are off the global cooldown, that you begin to realize that early game was not at all indicative of late or end game. By the time you're at end game, which is where the vast majority of pretty much every MMO takes place, the flow of battle feels entirely different. While the combat was definitely slower than I would have liked, I was completely captivated by the story as soon as I stepped foot in that game. Story was a part of the reason that I enjoyed JRPGs as much as I did, becoming enthralled in a world world not your own, an escape so contrastingly different from the boring reality that we live in was just so enticing to me. Coming into this world for the very first time, seeing the city of Uldah, seeing hundreds of players just actively running around and the Makote dancing in the streets, I instantly fell in love with this game. I did not even need to see the other main cities of Gridania or Limsa Lominza to know that this was going to be an incredibly stunning game that was filled with endless wonder. So I created my character. Initially, I wasn't really sure what class I wanted to go with. I love playing mages in games, but I didn't want to end up with DPS queues while leveling, so was tempted to run with whatever the tank options were. After perusing my options, I ended up going Thaumaturge, which ends up becoming Black Mage at level 30. Oh, right. Uh, before I go any further, I guess, let me discuss how the class system works in Final Fantasy IV since this works quite a bit differently to what you're probably used to. Now, I know that I am, of course, seeing class repeatedly, but 
Final Fantasy XIV actually refers to advanced classes as jobs, which your base class advances into at level 30. I know it's a little bit confusing, trust me, it does get easier. The game utilizes the Holy Trinity, Tank, which consists of Marauder and Gladiator, Healer, which consists of Conjurer and Arcanist, and DPS, which consists of the Pugilist, Lancer, Rogue, Archer, Thaumaturge, and Arcanist. Each base class, as discussed a moment ago, can advance into more powerful versions of their class, with the Gladiator progressing into the Paladin, the Marauder into the Warrior, Warrior, the Pugilist into the Monk, the Lancer into the Dragoon, the Rogue into the Ninja, the Archer into the Bard, the Thaumaturge, my class, into the Black Mage, the Arcanist into either the Summoner or the Scholar, and the Conjurer into the White Mage, which is actually the class that Mrs. Dix has made for several years now. Then we have the expansion jobs like the Dark Knight and the Gunbreaker as tanks, the Astrologian as the healer, the Machinist, the Samurai, the Red Mage, the Dancer, and the Blue Mage as DPS. And finally, the two upcoming classes, the Sage and the Reaper, coming when Endwalker releases in November. Now, one thing I believe Final Fantasy really excels in is the freedom that it provides its players. It allows for you to play what you want pretty much whenever you want to, as you're given the opportunity to swap between any class at any time. You can level every single job on a single character, meaning that there is absolutely no need for ults within the game to enjoy something different. Although this is not where this ends though, far from it. You're also given the opportunity of leveling every crafting and gathering profession on a single character. Crafters are referred to as Disciples of the Hand and consist of the Alchemist, the Armorer, the Blacksmith, the Carpenter, the Culinarian, the Goldsmith, the Leatherworker, and the Weaver. Likewise, Gathering, referred to as Disciples of the Land, consists of Botany, Fishing, and Mining. Suffice it to say, there it really is plenty to waste your life away pursuing should you feel so inclined. I personally have never really been that big a fan of crafting in my MMOs or crafting in general, really. So if you take a look at my list of classes and my list of professions that are leveled, you're gonna see they're pretty much empty. But that doesn't mean I have not attempted them. I do have multiple characters and I did at one point level various different disciples of the hands to probably around level 30, maybe level 40, and multiple of the Disciple of the Lands to probably maybe somewhere in the 20s or 30s as well. And while I can't say I necessarily enjoyed it because it's not really my passion, I can say that there is plenty for those of you that are, again, so inclined. Now, backtracking a little bit, I ended up choosing to go the Black Mage route. I love playing with magic and I wanted to channel my inner Vivi. Like, like honestly, guys, who would not want to channel a little bit of Vivi, right? And so I began my journey that would go on to span months, span years, a journey that I'm still actively enjoying to this day. And while I initially started this game alone, I now have a companion in my travels across Eorzea and beyond, my wife, Mrs. Sticks, who actually, <laughs> And I hate to admit this here, is a much better player than I am at this game. She has completed every single savage boss fight for every tier as it was relevant, and she is making her way through ultimate raid content right now. Our journey through the game was filled with quite a few different emotions. I've never seen Mrs. Six cry in a video game up until she played Final Fantasy XIV. And while your introduction to the game definitely begins very slowly, as all JRPGs seem to, it continues to get progressively better the longer you stick with it and the more invested in the characters you become. I know you've all heard tales of how much of a chore this game can be to get through, and honestly, I don't entirely disagree with that sentiment. There are various different parts in the story that you just wish you could skip. They're, they're too slow, they're too filled with menial tasks that really only serve to pad out the time that it takes to level. And considering how long of a game this is, I mean, to fully enjoy the game and to experience everything it has to offer, the game actually takes hundreds of hours, like 200, 300, maybe 400 hours if you're not skipping anything and taking your time to explore. So this is 100% unnecessary. Thankfully, Square took note of this and removed a large chunk of these quests, further trimming some of the quest lines down to a much more tolerable level. But at the end of the day, if you're a fan of JRPGs like I am, you're no stranger to downtime parts of the game where you're you're just not really doing much. While there were a few times, especially after clearing the base 2.0 game with the patches necessary before Heavensward that I felt 
I just wasn't really enjoying myself as much anymore, I decided that I wanted to stick with it. I am not going to quit a game because I was a little bit bored for a short period of time. And luckily, Mrs. Dix and I did because we were greeted with one of the most engaging stories that I have seen in an MMO since Wrath of the Lich King, only exceeded by their most recent Shadowbringers expansion. Now, if you're not a fan of narratives in your MMOs and you would prefer to just go about exploring a large sandbox world with the freedom to progress how you want, this is definitely not the game for you. Maybe something like Black Desert Online would better suit those needs that you have. Final Fantasy XIV, it feels like a single player JRPG that you can play completely solo if you want to, or you can play with a, a group of friends or strangers when or if need be. A game that you can wander through and just enjoy the, the sheer beauty that this game seems to offer and in your own way, at your own pace, in your own time. But just because it does have a large emphasis on the narrative does not mean that it doesn't also have a large varied selection of content to consume outside of that. Yes, the story is what captivates your attention, but it's what you do in the game between the story that really keeps you there. Leveling is pretty traditional. You take quests, you run from area to area fighting monsters, you queue into dungeons, you go about obtaining materials, you fill up your hunting log by hunting monsters out in the field, you participate in fates which are large open events that spawn randomly all over the map in every single zone. Okay, so not necessarily entirely traditional, but it still feels very, very familiar. Then as the story progresses, you unlock the ability to run trials, which put you up against primals like Ifrit or Shiva or Leviathan, Ramu, Bahamut, all names that you no doubt recognize. These trials are eight player fights that require coordination, they require teamwork and understanding of mechanics. You know, a general list of things that none of us really have. After your leveling journey is complete, you're greeted with the end game. Now there are two different types of MMO players, the PvE player and the PvP player. PvP players spend hours grinding through battlegrounds, through arenas, and open world PvP every single day. PvE players are on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. PvE players, they run dungeons, they run raids, and the most competitive type of content the game has to offer to its player base, typically avoiding PvP as they have absolutely no interest in it. Now I know I'm gonna get some flack for saying this, but it is generally considered common knowledge that the PvP PvP in Final Fantasy XIV is a little bit lacking, a little bit underwhelming. From someone who came from open world PvP MMOs like World of Warcraft and Ion, I was severely disappointed by what was present within Final Fantasy XIV. But you know what? All of the PvE content more than made up for the lack of EP measuring competitions that I used to have. And honestly, if I felt the innate need to relive my days PvPing, I could just go back to those games that I enjoyed PvPing in. Which, interestingly enough, is something I tell people all the time, but this just seems to be a statement, uh, a general thought that other people just can't seem to wrap their head around for whatever reason. Endgame for PvE players though consists of fashion and, well, fashion. That is 100% the true endgame for Final Fantasy XIV. And while that is the true endgame, you also have things like Ultimate Raids, Savage Raids, Extreme Trials, 24-man Alliance Raids, the Bojan Southern Front, which allows for up to 72 players to explore and participate in simultaneously, Beast Tribe Quest, and for fans of crafting, the Ish Guardian Restoration. And oh my god, that that was quite the mouthful. And if all of that made sense to you, then congratulations, you are a much more dedicated player than I have ever been. If not, then you definitely have your work cut out for you. As these are just what constitute the main aspects of endgame PvE. That is disregarding anything that you choose to do by choice. Mount farming, leveling all your different jobs, obtaining every achievement. There's just so much to do at endgame that you will never feel bored. Or if you do, it's because like me, you chose to play casually. Yes, I am a casual. I can openly admit to this fact. Streaming three days a week, doing seven YouTube videos for the main MMO Byte channel and two to three for the MMO Byte mobile channel really just does not leave me much time to dedicate to an MMO and play competitively anymore. I know content creators that don't dedicate themselves to a specific MMO don't often have the experience to talk about the games they play with 
depth or precision of someone that devotes their very being to a game. But Final Fantasy XIV is one of four, maybe five games that I have played quite extensively for years at a time. Eorzea and Azeroth are my homes away from home. They are two worlds that I genuinely feel comfortable in. I know everything about them. I know everything about the two games that take place within them. I've become so enthralled with the stories being told that every new expansion brings me back for months at a time, and I do nothing but waste away over several days, breaking only for small potty trips and the occasional cheeseburger if I can bring myself to stand given I've been sitting for so long and I can't recall if my lower body is still attached. This is a game that I can talk about almost endlessly. I have had so many amazing experiences within Final Fantasy XIV that I just haven't had anywhere else. Mrs. Sticks has met so many great people through the game, and every time we do a dedicated video like this, or every time we stream it, it ends up bringing new people into the game that go on to tell us how much of an amazing experience they're having. Without Final Fantasy XIV, I really don't think this channel would have ever have taken off. Without Final Fantasy XIV, I don't think we would even have a channel right now. This game has given me thousands of hours worth of enjoyment. It has given me something to actively play with my wife, to enjoy outside of movies and hiking. And with Endwalker right around the corner, with the game coming towards the end of November if everything goes according to plan, I guarantee you we will end up lost once again within the world. Final Fantasy XIV is an amazing MMORPG, it is absolutely gorgeous. Sure, it might not necessarily hold up graphically when you compare to newer games being developed with modern tech, but there's no denying that this is a stunning MMO. The combat becomes much more difficult at endgame, requiring active micromanagement of every aspect of your job, damage mitigation, instant cast, regens, heals, aggro. Yes, there are tab target combat systems that are better out there, but trust me when I tell you, this feels more than sufficient. The world is expansive, every expansion adds in a surplus of new zones that are more exquisite than the last. The narrative spans so many years worth of content with it finally ending in Endwalker and beginning a new storyline for the first time in a decade. There's just so much content to consume that you're never at a loss of where you should go or what you should be doing with your time. And I know at the end of the day, there are going to be plenty of people out there that sit there and think to themselves, but sticks, there are plenty of MMOs out there that do this very same thing. And you know what? I'm not saying that there aren't other MMOs out there that do these things and that do them exceptionally well. Guild Wars 2, The Elder Scrolls Online, World of Warcraft, they are all MMOs that are exceptionally high quality titles, but to me personally, Final Fantasy 14 is just better. It just, I don't know, it does everything right. It offers me personally as an individual here, pretty much everything I would want out of an MMO. And because of that, I can say with utmost certainty, that this is the best MMORPG of 2021. And you know what, with Endwalker coming, this very well may end up being the best MMORPG of 2022 as well. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it.